So hey guys, how's it going? In case you don't know me, my name is Cristo Avalis, and I'm filling in for Mike today. As Mike posted on Twitter, he's going through a loss in his family. We wish him all the best. He can't record today. And so I'm doing my very best to fill his massive shoes in overviewing what happened on Super Tuesday and what it means going forward. And like Mike, I agree that it was a disappointing night for progressives and Bernie Sanders supporters, but it is by no means the end of the process. There's no denying that last night didn't go as planned or as we would hope, as Mike and I and many of our shared viewers would hope. We were hoping and expecting a massive Bernie Sanders win. If you looked at the polls even four or five days ago, let alone a week and a half ago, Bernie Sanders was poised for a multiple hundreds delegate lead after all the states were counted. But because of the coalescence of neoliberals behind Joe Biden, because of the media narratives that have been spun on overdrive since South Carolina, Joe Biden has been able to manage some kind of massive turnaround and reemerge as the front runner. Again, the race isn't over because if you look at the delegate counts right now, Biden has about a 70 delegate lead over Bernie Sanders. But we expect that to narrow because as more votes are counted from California, Bernie Sanders should gain on Biden. Suffice it to say, Biden will likely lead in delegates after all is said and done from Super Tuesday, but it will not be a massive lead by any means. So Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are basically locked in a two horse race with Biden having the advantage and having the momentum right now. And it really does show just how powerful the party establishment can be when it wants to achieve something. The Democratic establishment is never this organized or committed or driven when it comes to fighting for workers or healthcare or the environment or any of those sorts of things. But when they want to stop a Democratic socialist with record-breaking support from young people, my goodness, they can pull it all together in two or three days, it seems. And Joe Biden, after his win in South Carolina, which was 100% expected and did not deserve the media narratives it got, was basically able to rally Klobuchar and Budicic and Beto O'Rourke and many, many others, Jim Clyburn and many others to his side. And when you combine that with the media narratives, he basically rode to a massive victory on Super Tuesday relative to his expectations. And we know this for a few reasons. Biden basically overperformed in nearly every state. In the states he was expected to win, he won even larger. He also won some states that he was not expected to win, like Massachusetts in Minnesota. Those were not Biden states, but he won them in some cases by clear margins over Bernie Sanders. Another factor is that when you look at voting times, those who voted late, those who made their decisions later, tended to vote more heavily for Biden than those who casted early votes, those who had already made their decision in the weeks prior, who voted more likely with Bernie Sanders. That shows that Biden clearly has the momentum right now. Right now, Biden can still be defeated. There's a couple caveats, however. If we look at the narratives from last night, the two also rans, Bloomberg and Warren, are sounding very different signals. Michael Bloomberg had an awful night and is basically already planting the seeds to exit the race, that he'll be reassessing his campaign. I don't necessarily know if he's dropping out today or tomorrow or when it's going to come, but it looks very likely from my perspective that he's going to drop out and endorse Joe Biden for president. That's my inkling. Or at the very least, he'll drop out, maybe not endorse anyone, but in dropping out, he feels he'll be able to send more of his support to Biden than would go to Sanders, which would, of course, help Joe Biden. And Elizabeth Warren, for whatever reason, is still planning to stay in the race, at least if you believe the narratives from her campaign last night, who sent out fundraising emails and pep talk emails about how the delegates aren't fully known tonight, there's six states voting next week, Warren is still in this, and that she's playing for the convention to be the unity candidate. And it's all really, really sad to see at this point. Because Elizabeth Warren sticking in this race could be the very thing that prevents Bernie Sanders from being able to win. 
I'm not saying that if Warren drops out, Bernie Sanders is guaranteed victory, but her staying in makes Bernie Sanders chance to win a plurality and especially a majority of delegates very, very difficult. And we saw it last night on Super Tuesday. Elizabeth Warren was not viable in many, many states. And in the state she was viable, all it really served to do was lower Bernie Sanders' accessible delegate threshold. In some key states like Minnesota and her own home state of Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren effectively allowed Joe Biden to win because she split the progressive vote. In Massachusetts, her home state, she was third place. So embarrassing. But she still got about 20% of the vote, which means that Bernie Sanders lost one of the more liberal states in the country to Joe Biden, of all people, because she split that vote. And so Warren right now is doing more to help Joe Biden than Pete Buttigieg or Amy Klobuchar or Beto O'Rourke ever could have because by staying in the race, she's dividing progressive energies, she's dividing progressive volunteers, she's dividing progressive ideas, and on and on and on and on. And Warren really needs to consider dropping out and endorsing Bernie, because I understand they don't agree on everything, and I understand that this primary process hasn't been the most fun time of the Warren-Bernie friendship and relationship, but at this stage, if she wants to have any chance of implementing her progressive policies, and she has a lot of them, wealth taxes, child care, pharmaceutical production on a public nonprofit basis, I could go on and on. Warren has a lot of good proposals. But if she wants to implement them, the only way it happens is with Bernie Sanders as president and with her working with Bernie Sanders to accomplish those important but challenging goals. And right now, Warren seems to be indicating that she'd rather stay in the race to elect Joe Biden than she would exit the race to help ensure a progressive is on the ticket. Again, guys, this was not a great night, but it is by no means over. This is now clearly a two horse race between Bernie and Biden. It already was, but now the delegate math lays that out clear as day. Bernie or Biden the nominee will be one of those two men. It's basically a 100% guarantee at this stage. And so Bernie Sanders really needs to continue and hammer the attacks on Joe Biden on multiple fronts. One, it really does need to be noted that Biden's personal and familial scandals will be candy to Donald Trump. Whether it's Burisma or whether it's Biden's gropiness, Biden will be such a potential disaster for the Democratic Party in a general election. There's no avoiding that. But beyond the personal, Joe Biden's political legacy is worse than Hillary Clinton's in some way. And the way Donald Trump won in 2016 was by portraying Hillary Clinton as an out of touch corporate elite neoliberal Democrat that didn't really give a damn about working people. And Trump was telling the truth there. Trump also doesn't give a damn about working people, but all he needed to do was show working people that Hillary Clinton didn't really care about them and either trick them into voting for Trump or demobilize them from voting at all. And Biden's record on trade, on labor policy, on racial justice, on the Iraq war, on bankruptcies, on generational justice is goddamn awful. Biden's record is awful, and Donald Trump and the Republicans will 100% be able to weaponize that to either convince former Obama voters to stay with Trump or to convince millions of people, be they young or marginalized or whatever, that it's not worth voting for either of these men, and Trump will take that. Trump doesn't give a damn if you're demobilized because Republicans win when people don't vote. And Joe Biden will not drive voters. Conversely, Bernie Sanders needs to hammer home that he is the one that will mobilize voters. He is the one that will win over the disaffected working class in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Joe Biden is part of the Obama legacy that won those states twice, but left those states worse off in 2016 than they were in 2008 in many ways because they were not privy to the massive national recovery that was bragged about by Clinton and Obama and others, even though it was largely clustered in a few coastal states. 
that the Democrats did very well in, but they lost the presidency and the Senate and the House because, you know, at the end of the day, people in Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, and states like that did not see the recovery and did not see Obama as keeping his promise to them to fight for regular working people. And of course, Joe Biden, who wants to run on the Obama legacy when it's convenient, will have it levied against him when it's inconvenient. So Super Tuesday was a bad night for progressives. Many of the down-ballot candidates did not find success. Bernie Sanders did not have the result we expected. The neoliberals have shown that they have far greater unity than the progressives do, given that Elizabeth Warren continues to stubbornly run. But despite all of that, Bernie Sanders is within 100 delegates. He's within 70 delegates. It might even be closer when California is fully counted. And in a one-on-one race between Bernie and Biden, Bernie will finally have the chance to really hone in on his one challenger and his fundamental weaknesses, both against Trump, but also in terms of representing the increasingly progressive values of the Democratic Party base and of the American public. So Bernie has still got this, guys. This is a body blow, but it is not a knockout. And at this stage, our resolve will be tested. Bernie's resolve, but also the resolve of all of his supporters. In this moment, we need to pull together and keep pushing. If we can't do it now, there's no way we could ever win a general election. So let this be our first big test. Let us overcome it and let us win. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you'll like a lot of my videos on my channel. Mike asked me to promote my own stuff, so I'm here doing it. My channel is just Christo Avalis. We'll post a link in the description. I post daily political videos. Mike and I generally have the same views. We're both democratic socialists. We both believe in Bernie Sanders. We both believe in the policies of Bernie. So I hope you'll come by my channel. I hope you'll check it out. And I'm always happy to fill in for Mike again whenever he needs it.